Welcome back into the racing game series, the version 2, and where we left off is we built this vehicle editor script that when we drop a empty game object, it creates a rigid body. So we're going to use the same principle and we are going to try and spawn these two wheels. So we're going to spawn two wheels on each side. So two on this side and two on this side. So let's go ahead and open up the script which is right here and this is how it works so we got the menu item obviously we got the open get window and then we got this GUI which lets us know what we're doing with our game objects we got our simple button and then we got this create components so what we need right now is two more empty game objects so basically two more of these okay so right here let's create car wheels Let's comment it out. And for the car wheels, we'll use a standard game object, but this time we'll make it a array. So this array can only contain one or two game objects. And in the start, we want to initialize this wheels. So let's create a run checks method in here that runs constantly because we constantly want to run the wheels and we want to make sure that we don't mess up our cars so what do we want to do in the run checks first of all we want to check if wheels is not equal to null so if the wheels are equal to null which means the array is null it holds nothing we want to create a game object so we want to say wheels is equal to new game object game object so if it is equal to null, we just want to say wheels is equal to new game object and inside the brackets, we want to say zero. So if this is null, then we just want to set it to zero. However, this array can also overflow, which means it can have three wheels. And as we know, we can only do two wheels. So we, so we can do one in the rear and one in the front. We can do four different ones. So we just duplicate the one in the front and the one in the rear. So the way we're going to do that is by running some more checks. So first of all, we are going to say if the wheels are not equal to null, then we want to do another check and ask if the wheels dot length is greater or equal to one. Then we just want to reset the length to one. So now that we have this simple checking mechanism, what we want to do is we want to make this wheels show up into the car editor script so to do that we're gonna put we're gonna go back into on gui and then we are going to comment some things out so this is the car game object and down here we want to say car wheels so into the car wheels we want to do basically the exact same thing however this time we want to change this r1 into r2 this R2 can be whatever value we, we give it. We can just do whatever string we want. Let's just keep it H2 for now. This will find the wheels. So this wheels right here. And then the H2 will be applied as a property. So now if we go back into Unity, we should see a ray pop up in here, right there. So now what we can do is we can have a ray of zero, which is wrong. However, we can add a element in here, but we can't add two elements in here. The problem is that we are comparing it to one. So let's compare it to two and let's see if the problem has been fixed. So now if we go back into the wheels, we try to add another element, we can see we have two elements in here. We can remove both elements, which is wrong, but we can't add more elements, which is right. So let's see how we can make that. We can only remove one of these elements. So we always have one element. To do that, we are going to have to do another check in here. And if the wheels are not equal to null, the wheels are greater than two or... So in here, we want to do another check and we want to check if wheels dot length is equal to zero so if it is equal to zero we want to say wheels is equal to new game object and inside the brackets we want to say one okay so now we have one element and we cannot remove the element however we can add another element so um, 
So now that we got these wheels working perfectly fine, the array can never overflow or go below zero, which is beautiful. That is all we wanted. Now that we're done with the checks, we can go ahead and use these wheels. Okay, so now that we got our two elements in here perfectly aligned, let's try and spawn in four wheels. So for the sake of simplicity, I'll just go ahead and make a cylinder to represent the wheels. So let's shape the cylinder something like wheel. Let's create a prefab of that cylinder and let's completely delete it from the scene. So now that we got our cylinder, let's drop it. And if we try to drop it, we're going to see another issue that we cannot actually see what we're dropping because it is constantly running these checks. So to avoid that, before we do any of these checks, we want to check if the wheels dot length is equal to two. So if it is equal to two, we just simply want to return and we don't want to do another check in here. We also want to return if the wheels dot length is equal to one. So we want to say if the wheels dot length is equal to two or the wheels dot length is equal to one. So if any of these returns a true value, we're just simply going to return. So we don't run those checks. Now we can uh, place our objects in here. It still works fine. It's still we can add more elements. So now that we got that working, we have two cylinders, we have a game object, and now we can simply create four instances. So let's do that back into the buttons. What I want to do is make these buttons a little bit thicker. So I'll just say GUI layout dot height, something like 40, maybe. And there we go. Now let's create another button and let's call it spawn wheels. Let's quickly create a class called spawn wheels. And then inside the spawn wheels, what do we want to do? Well, we obviously want to use these wheels. And before we spawn them, we want to check if the array contains two wheels or one wheel. So first we are going to do the case for one wheel. And we're going to say if wheels dot length is equal to one. If it is equal to one, we want to just simply spawn these instances right here. So we want to say a for loop and inside the for loop, we're just going to create a ordinary for loop that goes to four. So we want to create four wheels and for each iteration, we want to just spawn the wheel. So we want to say instantiate wheel in the index one and that's it. Now this will hopefully instantiate the wheels. Let's first use just one element and let's try and create four wheels. So as we can see, we have a error in here and I think the error is this. We're using the wrong index. So now if we spawn the four wheels, we have successfully spawned all four wheels. The only problem is that it spawned at a very random position and scale. So in order to fix that, first of all, we are going to have to store these variables into a game object. And then after we store them, we can manipulate with them. And first of all, we want to set the parent of that. So we so we're going to say a dot transform dot parent is equal to car dot game object dot transform. And after we do that, we want to reset the position. So we want to say a dot transform dot position is equal to vector three dot zero. We also want to transform the scale. So we want to say a dot transform dot local scale is equal to new vector three one one one. So now if I've done everything correctly, we should have these four wheels spawn inside the car. So the car for now is this game object. And if we spawn the wheels, we should see all four wheels have spawned correctly. As we can see in here, the only problem is that the local position is not set correctly. So in here, when we say the position, we just change that into local position. Now, if we go ahead and delete these four wheels again, spawn them, we should see position is set to zero. Okay, now let's try and drag the car into the car up here and let's try to spawn the four wheels. We should see they all should spawn right in the middle of the car. 
and at the position 0. Okay, so that is all I have prepared for this episode. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.